And magandang araw sa inyo mga kalaboy uh, At ito na naman po ang inyong lingkod <laughs> May nasagap na naman po tayong balita no? Ito po'y patungkol sa China Na kung bakit eh, ang Pilipinas ang lagi niyang binubuli Bakit nga ba? Binubuli nga ba tayo? O sinasadya lang nila yon Para ang Pilipinas ay maasar, mainis At pabayaan na lang sa kanila yung mga parte na dapat pag-aangkin o pagmimayari ng Pilipinas yan sa may karagatan, no? At kung bakit ang sinasabi nila sa mga artikulo ngayon na ang Pilipinas ang tinik sa lalamunan ng China sa kanyang pagpapalawig. Lalo na yung mga neighboring countries na nakapalibot sa China. At hindi lang pala tayo ang gina nito. Marami na rin po na mga bansa na binuli na rin ang China at sinakop na rin yung mga party na dapat eh doon sa mga ibang bansa yung nakalaan. Sang ayon doon sa unang mapa. Pero ngayon daw, ito ang balita, naglabas daw ng bagong mapa ang China. August 2023, bago lang po ito mga kalaboy. No, August 2023, may sarili ng mapa ang China na hindi daw katanggap-tanggap sa ibang bansa. Mas lalo yung mga karatik lugar o dun sa boundaries na naghihiwaray ng China at yung mga ibang bansa. Bakit nga ba? Kasi daw, ang dahilan, eh, ipapakita ko po sa inyo itong video na ating napanood po. Ano? Masyadong napaka-sensitibo in a way pero malaman at kapupulutan natin ng idea to so tignan na lang po natin kung ano pong sinasabi nito at para naman po tayo magkaroon ng counting pangunawa eh bakit nga ba ang Pilipinas lagi ang tinitira o diba binubuli ng mga Chino ngayon kasi nga po hindi naman po tayo yung kumbaga ngayon lang naman tayo eh Dati, may mga bansa na pala na nakaranas na rin ng ganitong panggigipit ng China. Uh, ito po, panoorin na natin. On August 28, 2023, the Chinese government released a map. The map did a surprisingly good job at making a lot of other countries angry. Several countries have rejected China's new standard map. It's a violation of the law. So that's where um, I put that map. Ayun, mga kalaboy, may mga bansa na umaalma dahil dito sa bagong mapa na gustong na, eh, ipamahagi ng China na sa buong mundo, sa mga mapa o globe na design na gagawin nila. Ito raw ang bagong China. Pero kung papansinin natin dito guys, ano, yung tinatawag natin na uh, 9 dash line or 10 dash line pero tignan nyo na lang yung mga dash dito sa China malapit sa atin pati pala ang Taiwan guys mga kalaboy sinakop na rin pala o gusto na rin palang ipasok dun sa sovereignty o sa nasasakupan ng China diba? napakalapit naman masyado o masyado naman nilakihan itong China ang design ng kanilang bagong mapa at kung saan nakapaloob ang bansa ng, ng, ng Taiwan sa kanila pati na yung karagatan na to napakalaki naman ang sinakop nila tinan nyo guys katiting lang katiting lang ang gusto nilang itira sa Pilipinas ano nga ba namang klaseng diba, kasakiban ito kung sasabihin natin Yes, uh, to, to define the word, ano? para nagiging sakim naman tong China. Sa pagpapalawi, pati naman, pati ba naman itong mga bansang ito, eh, ang karagatan, eh, dapat nahahati ito. Eh, gusto pa rin nilang angkinin. So guys, ituloy pa rin natin kung ano yung sinasabi ng video. Release of this map also was met with a huge event and announcement within China. This featured the state media launching into a commentary on the importance of maps. Followed by a warning to the people that maps that have errors can cause, quote, great harm to society. 
So let's look at what's going on with this map, why countries around the region are condemning it, and why China had to go to such great lengths to tell people that there's nothing wrong with these maps, and that in fact, a map like this is key to national unity. Uh, dito mga kalaboy, no? inihayag pa daw ng China sa media na ang kahalagahan daw ng mapa. At sinasabi pa na mag-ingat sa mga maling mapa na magdudulot ng kapahamakan sa kanilang sosyedad o society. At ang ibig sabihin, ano nga ba ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin nito guys, eh, ang, ang mali daw ng mapa ay magdudulot daw ng pagkawatak-watak ng kanilang mamamayan at ng bansa nila. Okay? So, yan ang pinapahalagahan daw ng China ngayon. Kung bakit pinapalawig nila ang kanilang mga lugar na pwede pang masakop. At kung bakit ipinoprotesta ng Pilipinas ang kanilang bagong tendas line na yan. ba? Diba? At masakop ang ilang porsyento ng ating karagatan. Base naman dun sa unang nine dust line A. Eh, mas maluwag, mas malaki pa rin yung porsyento ng ating uh, sovereignty no? uh, beyond those waters na meron tayong kaunting porsyento pa na nasasakupan. To do this, I'm gonna need a high-res version of this map. Luckily, the Chinese government has me covered. 地图是国家版图最主要的表现形式 发布了矢量地图更好地满足专业用户 I want to show you what this map says and show you how China uses cartography to assert and project power in its region. Because as clean as this map looks, within it, there's actually a lot going on. Border tug of wars, fake islands, a tenth dash on a line in the ocean, barbed wire wrapped clubs and proxy wars. It's the perfect example of how maps aren't just maps. They're tools of national power. Ayan, post ko muna mga kalaboy ah. Pero ito, papakita ko lang sa inyo na hindi lang naman po ang Taiwan at hindi rin naman po ang Pilipinas lang. Di ba? Kung, kung pagka tayo lang muna ang nangunang nagprotesta. Pero kung tutuusin, damay po dito ang Malaysia, ang, ang Vietnam, di ba? Mm, yan ang mga neighboring countries natin na pwedeng mag-alsa you know, sa mga darating na araw o panahon na hindi na rin nila magugustuhan itong mga binabalak na pagpapalawig ng China. So, tuloy lang po natin. Now, it's time to dive into this mapping story about China and its very, very interesting new map. The government of China wants their country to look like this. But in reality, it looks a lot more like this. We're gonna move left to right from India to Taiwan and the South China Sea. Oh, by the way, the Chinese government requires its map makers to use this algorithm that intentionally scrambles the latitude and longitude coordinates of their maps, all in the name of national security. This makes it hard for people like me to work with Chinese maps. But we were able to hack through these maps and line them up with our own mapping systems, which is how we're able to make this video. Okay, with that, let's get started. First, we have Kashmir, a region that is already heavily disputed between India and Pakistan. The map shows that all of this section is a part of China, and indeed, China controls it. But India claims that this actually belongs to them. It's the source of tense conflict. Both countries are building stuff in this region. Roads, communication towers, airfields, everything to be ready in case a full-blown conflict breaks out. Troops from both sides face each other in a standoff at this line, the line of actual control. That's really what it's called. It loosely marks the border between these two massive countries, a border that was never really agreed upon. Because remember where we are here. We're in the Himalayas, the tallest mountains on earth. Drawing lines and controlling territory here just doesn't work super well. But both sides want to exert control, even here in the high mountains, especially in these important trade regions. These are two nuclear countries, and so they've agreed to not use firearms up here, no guns. So instead, when conflict breaks out, it looks more like a medieval battle with barbed wire wrapped clubs and fence posts. 
The most recent clash was just in 2020, right here near Ladakh. 20 Indian soldiers and four Chinese soldiers were killed. Indian and Chinese soldiers fought on disputed land using stones and bamboo poles, and around two dozen people died. As you go down the border between India and China, there are several more of these pockets of disputed land in the Himalayas. As we head east, we'll hit Nepal, and I have to mention that there was recently a leaked government report out of Nepal that asserts that China is encroaching into Nepal's sovereign territory, building stuff with no permission on Nepal's side of the border here in the Humla district. Nepal actually didn't want this report to come out. They have to walk a fine line being sandwiched between these two behemoth countries, and a big part of that means staying on China's good side. Let's keep going east, where we'll hit another landlocked country in the Himalayas, Bhutan. The border here continues to make an effort to divide these countries in a rugged, glacier-filled expanse. Back in 2006, China quietly pressured Bhutan to give them this big chunk of mountain territory. And Bhutan conceded they didn't really have a choice. And so while they kind of keep it hush-hush, China is reminding the world that they actually control this part of Bhutan. It's theirs now. China's using the same playbook in different parts of Bhutan, blurring this northern border as they encroach south. In 2020, China claimed that they actually own this part of Bhutan, a forested nature sanctuary. But strangely, this official map doesn't show that this area is inside of China's borders. Maybe it will next year. The most strategically important part of China's claim on Bhutan is here. This little strip of land gives us a better idea of why China is squeezing the border of this tiny country. If you zoom out, you'll see where we are. Right here at this vital choke point between these two rivals, India and China. This thin corridor where India connects to its eastern states. Some call this the chicken neck. The map asserts that China owns this part of Bhutan, the Doklam Plateau, which provides them a perfect military vantage point over the chicken neck, India's critical corridor. This would make India vulnerable in the case of an active conflict. Oh, and their claim is not just on the map. Satellite imagery analyzed by Reuters shows that China is building roads and settlements and structures on this sovereign territory of Bhutan, enhancing their strategic military position and fortifying their claim on the map. Ayan mga kalaboy, nakita na natin ang dahilan. At kung titignan natin lahat yan, yung istilong ginagawa ng China, eh pareho-pareho din yung ginawa nila sa ating karagatan. Di mo ba? Tayo nung tayo ng mga infrastruktura at kung ano-anong <laughs> nilalagay nila doon para lang masabing nauna sila doon at natayuan na nila ng mga struktura yun at maangkin nila yung lugar na yun. Well, di ba? Kaya na po mag-isip kung anong talagang nakakatawang party dito. Yung, yung, yung China talaga eh bully ano. <laughs> Tuloy na po natin. Map. These border shenanigans in Bhutan are considered a proxy for tension between China and India. Bhutan, like Nepal, is just sandwiched in the middle. The satellite images of the Chinese incursions in Bhutan, where China has built roads and barracks on the undisputed territory of Bhutan. Okay, let's keep moving on. Next to Bhutan, China's map shows that all of this land are within its borders. They now call it South Tibet. But all of this territory belongs to India. It's full of Indian citizens. India's claim to this land relies on this 890-kilometer borderline that a British representative drew in 1913 in partnership with a representative from Tibet who agreed to the line. But China says this isn't legitimate. They own Tibet now, and they never authorized this line dividing Tibet from India. So on their map, they assert that all of this belongs to China. And to take it a step further, they're actually renaming stuff on their maps in this region, from mountain peaks to rivers and cities, showing us how China wants to claim and standardize every corner of its country, exerting control and influence even in these remote places. Now, India is not standing by and letting this happen. To counter this, the Indian government is spending a half a billion dollars to build roads and develop hundreds of villages with the goal of solidifying their claim to this land. As we head east, let me mention that during the pandemic, China has been building a fence along this border with Myanmar, mostly to keep people and illicit goods out of China. 
This border has always been porous. People who share culture and language would cross back and forth, informally trading. But this fence has totally changed that, and people are angry. I've considered doing an entire video on this border fence and how it's disturbing and affecting life here. If that's interesting to you, please let me know in the comments. So while this isn't a disputed territory, it is another example of China's increased effort to tighten its control on every corner of its land. Okay, now we've arrived to the ocean, the part of the map that gets a little wild. The government map actually makes it look simple. All of the water inside of this dashed line is China's. But the reality actually looks like this. This is what's known as the Nine Dash Line, and it was effectively a hand-drawn boundary by the Chinese government in the 1940s. It's not a precise border. It wasn't agreed upon by the countries here, and nor is it legal, at least according to the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague, who calls the Nine Dash Line lawless, because it clearly cuts through the waters that international law says belong to these neighboring countries. And that's how you get this jumble of all these lines. O oh, diba mga kalaboy, ayan o, oh, tumpak ang nine dust line. Yan nakaguhit na pula na yan, yan ang marka na dapat ang Pilipinas ang nananakop dyan. <laughs> Kung bakit sino ba naman ang panahon ng 1940s pa daw, ginunguhit ng mga China yan, na yung, yung nine dust line na hindi raw ang totoo, ten dust line daw ang kanila. Diba, napakaliit na party lang yung mga... Guhit-guhit na malilit na pula na yan, yan lang daw ang natitirang karagatan natin at lahat ay sa kanila. Maangkin talaga, ano? But, as superpowers do, China ignores all of this because they can. And they continue to operate as if this entire ocean, which by the way is replete with fish and fossil fuels, as well as militarily strategic islands and important trade routes, all of it is theirs. This has created active conflicts with neighboring countries because for China, these aren't just lines on a map. China has been pumping sand onto tiny reefs to create islands where there were none. Then, they build a military outpost on these newly created islands. In the last decade, they've built dozens of these outposts throughout the South China Sea. And you can see that these militarized islands are right inside the waters that the world has agreed belong to these other countries. The Chinese Navy also steps in, patrolling these waters and routinely harassing fishermen from other countries, reminding them that China isn't subject to the rules. This is their water, just like their official map says. The United States is accusing China of harassment. A Filipino fisherman was chased by Chinese Coast Guard speedboats as he made a dash for the shallow waters of Scarborough Shoal last Friday. Ayan na mga kaayo, malinaw na malinaw po ano, na hindi lang naman pala tayo ang binubuli nitong, nitong bansang China, kundi itong mga karatig bansa din pala na pilit inaangkin nila ang mga lupain na gusto nila mapalawig o lumaki pa ang mga nasasakupan nila. Isang literal na pambubuli kung tutusin Diba? It's a showcase of power Pakitaan na ng lakas ito eh, kumbaga. Kaya malakas ang loob nila Isipin mo at matakin na man natin eh, Yung mga lugar na pilit din ang sinasakop Itinatayo na ng mga infrastruktura nila Nilalagyan na ng mga tao Ginagawang base o base ano? Para lang takutin yung, yung, yung mga bansang Nasa paligid at huwag nang umalma Pero kung totoo siya, may uh, arbitrary naman na namamagitan sa mga bansa, lalo na doon sa mga sovereign o yung mga nasasakupan kung kanino nga ba dapat. At sila yung nag-arbitrate na mamagitan at nagdi-decide sa tulong ng mga gumaan mga bansa kung kanino nga ba at para kanino nga ba itong lugar na to. At uh, man, hindi na uh, subukan pa. Pero... Wala tayong magagawa guys, ano? Talagang matigas ang ulo, makulit, <laughs> kung tutuusin. Pero ito yung simpleng kaalaman lang na may babahagi ko sa inyo. Kung minsan, oh, masyado tayong emotional, ano? Masyadong, yes, we protect our, our sovereign in our country. 
Pero the mere fact na hindi naman pala tayo, hindi naman po tayo lang ang gina nito ng China, hindi marami din bansa ang dumaan o nakaranas ng ganitong pambubuli. At uh, ang susunod na ating pag-uusapan guys, handa na ba tayong lumaban kung tutusin? Pero uh, ayan, nakikita ko lang dun sa mga ibang vlogs na sabi ng mga mambabatas natin, bakit pa natin kailangan ng tulong ng, ng ibang bansa? Pwede naman daw tayong lumaban. Well, correct me if I'm wrong guys. Masyadong advanced sa technology ng China. Eh, Lumilevel yan sa Amerika. Diba? Para sabihin natin, handa na tayong dumaban. Doon sa mga armas nila. Hindi <laughs> po ba? Hindi pa natin kaya. Aminin na natin, guys. Hindi pa natin kaya. Kaya tama lang siguro na nandyan pa rin ang Amerika na pilit, diba? Uh, tumutulong sa atin. Hindi na naman tayong tinutulungan yan eh. Pero kahit pa paano, masabi lang na meron tayong malakas na nakabantay Diba, nakamasid sa atin para kung ano't ano man ang mangyari magbibigay ng tulong yan okay guys maraming maraming salamat uh, yung mga ibang topic na itong aking nasabi i-upload ko rin at para magbigay lang ng kaunting kalinawan kan at uh, total na pag-uusapan na rin okay maraming maraming salamat